DPM structure modification. This is where we get into uh, my thought about using more commercial buildings. This is, uh, I, I don't know what the names of the different, it's a DPM structure, I know that, that's a Magnuson structure. And uh, those are going to be joined together to, to match the street uh, angle. Next one, please. And this brings out a point, just because the manufacturer ma offers this structure as a square or a rect rectangle, you don't have to build it that way. Uh, this one, of course, they, they wouldn't offer it in this configuration, but this is a sharp angle. So I put a styrene wall here and here, to, uh, and the track goes right, right behind it. And so it shortens. It looks like the, from the front, the, the building is full size, but it isn't when you look at it from the top. Next one. Here's an example of not preparing the building with, for lighting that, uh, and showing what happens. Now this building had a, a primer coat of gray and it was pretty good, but you can still see it shining through with a couple of spots, and certainly down here. The Magnuson building didn't have anything and it showed all the supports for the detail and everything. You, you, don't, you don't want that, that, uh, that shining through, that's why you're painting it black. Next. Okay, now all these buildings are primed. This is the, this one here uh, I modified. Next one, please. It had three windows here. I elongated one, I made a door out of it, put a platform in, put Central Valley stairs down. Now I have an upstairs apartment. Now my structure is basically different than 50,000 other ones just like it around the world. Next one, please. Let's see, can you go back one? Notice, notice the, the roof here. When I put that in place, it, it was in the, into the scenery and uh, it didn't look right. So I, uh, next one please. I made the roof slant down at a rakish angle here just above the window to, uh, to reduce that problem. Next one please. So I painted it all black on the inside. I used a tissue paper that was around the acetate for the, for the curtains and I put a, pieces of an IBM card in for a shade. Next one, please. And it looks pretty good. That Gins and, whoops, that Gins and Brothers is a paper sign that was put on that building, although it looks like it could be painted on. We'll get more to that in, in a while. Next one, please. This particular building had big windows and without anything in, inside it would look vacant so I made uh, these little crates which held vegetables and fruits and everything. After woodland scenic apples and oranges I ran out of fruits and vegetables to put in so I, what I did I, I got my squadron party and I, and I put a bead of about a sixteenth inch high on a piece of glass and just before it set, I hit it with a sharp pencil and making all these little bumps in it. And then I cut it up so that, then I colored them, then I cut them up and, and put them into the remaining slots. Next one, please. So now you see they're all there. You don't know what they are, but they've got to be fruits and vegetables because uh, that's what he sells. And you can see my framework I'm making now for the awning. Next one, please. I made the awning out of uh, aluminum foil, the same thing your wife used to wrap anything. And I wanted flaps, and so I used my, my picking shears. Don't use your wife's, as I said. And uh, make uh, pointed flaps on it. Next one, please. Here's the flaps. Next one, please. So I painted the uh, top side of the 
aluminum foil, um, probably Floco buffer or something like that, light, very light tan. And then I got some drafting tape. No, I said, I stressed drafting tape. You can get it at stationery stores. This is the tape that draftsmen use to hold the paper up on their drawing boards. And then when they peel it off, it doesn't take the, pick, take the paper with it. It has good holding qualities, but it doesn't strip everything away. So I made up a bunch of one eight strips and, and put them in about an inch, which inch apart across the painted foil. Next one, please. And then with my airbrush, I sprayed Coach Green on it covering the whole thing and then I took the strips off and I had a, a, a striped uh, awning. Next one. Now this is with the awning facing, top facing down. I got a one inch steel wire that I put on one end and I rolled the foil over and this will be the roll coming out of the, the building. Next one please. And there's my awning. Now that didn't take. That is rocket science. I mean, you can you can do that easily. Uh, go one more, please. Both these awnings, when they're let down, they they lose the tension after a while and they start to sway. And and so while well, I got a about a three inch dowel and I stroked it a little bit so it had that sway. And that's that's why the that's why I left it. Then I got it in place, and I know that the scenery was coming down on the corner of the collaborator's nest. That wasn't any good, so I wasn't. Uh, so I had to make a foundation here. So I put a one eighth inch piece of balsa wood on. I, I with my wood burning tool. I made rows of for stone work, and I colored it, and that became the foundation. Here's the building next to the grocery store. There's going to be Kate's Cafe. Again, this this roof has got a rakish angle to so match this, the street. So now it's supposed to be right, well, a rectangle, but it's going to be like a trapezoid when it's finished. Next one. I put in another piece of styrene to make the second wall, and I braced it there. I'll cut out this piece. Next one, please. So now I've got a stable building once more. This this door here was another entrance to the downstairs. And uh, I wanted a, a place to go upstairs to the, the apartments. So I, and, it, and uh, it was right in line with the windowsill. So I built up the door so that it wasn't in line. And I even bricked in this window, and I put a wall in behind there. And that became the stairs up, the upstairs apartments. Next, please. So, here we are. Almost done. Next one, please. I made the room, the sign rooms, so people know what's, what is upstairs. That was just a green arrow with outlined with a, with a small brush in white. I think I painted those the words on there, but you could use dry transfers or decals, I'm sure. So I made one window go up. That's in the corner. Rosie Rosie has always got her head stuck out to him who's down, down on the street and yelling at him. The Kate's Cafe was put on acetate and I put another piece of acetate over it to protect the lettering and I thought, well, I'll just make sure that they don't separate. I put a little dab of styrene cement on and the cafe and Kate's disappeared. So I thought maybe I put too much on, so I, I did it again, and I just put a, just a whisper on it, and, and the fumes must have got to it, but it, it all disappeared. So 
take it from me, don't join the two pieces that way. I did it with thin strips of scotch tape. Inside, uh, those are big windows too, and I decided to put uh, some kind of tables and chairs inside. This is a, a pattern from my computer, which um, I put rubber cement on and, and, and glued it to a piece of uh, paper pad backing or shirt cardboard, and I rolled it so it wouldn't have any wrinkles in it. Next one, please. It was a little too black and white for me, so I made some white chalk dust by scraping a single edge braid against the, the piece of chalk to, so I could rub it in and dull the, the floor a little bit like it would be over years of wear. Next one. So I go down to, I know Prizer makes tables and chairs, and so I go down to my hobby shop and I says, Do you have them? And nope. When will you get them? Oh, probably two or three weeks. And I said, I, I can't wait that long. I'm going to make my own. How hard could it be? So the seat is just a, a block of styrene. The back, which is glued to the seat, is formed around this, these pieces of cardboard. Two of the long pieces on each side and one across. And then and that's glued to the, the chair. <coughs> Notice I had to, I padded under the chair too. That one's for looks. That was to bring the, the back up so it could be seen above the wall. It was sitting down too low. Next one. The tables were made the same way. They were just pieces of styrene with a one piece through and a base. The tablecloths were made from room of foil and painted white. All the chairs and the tables were painted yellow so I could see them through the windows. Next please. This is the tables and chairs on the weathered floor. And it's, it's not, it's not, it wouldn't win any prizes, but it's, it's good enough for interior de detail just for looking at it. Next one, please. And there they are in the inside. And you notice know, Kate's only open for breakfast and lunch because that's the only time the trains come either they usually don't come after 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so if they do, they can get a snack at the station. Next one, please. Here's this, the walk going around the, the Kate's Cafe. Next one, please. And so now my Kate's is, is finished, and, and that structure's got to be one of a kind of all the tens of thousands of other, other ones of DPM structures like this. I may have gone a little bit too far to, to, to make it like that, but it doesn't take much to make it unique. Next one, please.